While Clark and I played the pop radio tunes, club jocks like Mad Mike Metrovich specialized in finding obscure records unique to their dances. Like Bob Lavorio and Terry Lee, Mad Mike created a sound that was all his and had the teens hopping all around Westview dance land. Mad Mike's sound was a sound that wasn't sent to him by record companies. He went out and found the sound and discovered. He had an ear for a sound for kids back in the 60s, I guess, basically. And it was alternative radio at, at, at the max. Well, I started listening to Mad Mike back when I was in grade school, actually, many years ago. Uh, I grew up in Lawrenceville, which was a big uh, oldies area. And my older brother actually got me started on this, and I've been a fan ever since. It's different from what everyone else was listening to. Uh, only certain neighborhoods like Lawrenceville, Westview, and Northside were into this. And uh, it just made you feel different, and it was really uh, just very unique music. It was totally alternative. He played everything from the early 50s up until brand new records that he had discovered. Hanky Panky, Casey Kasem even acknowledged him on TV that a little Pittsburgh disc jockey, Mad Mike, discovered this record and made the group what it is today. My baby dives the hanky pain. I put it on, went crazy. We were on Hanky Panky for three months, blasting it three or four times a night at all the dances, and on the show, it took off from there. I had to fight to get it on the air because it was, you know, it was started by Mad Mike playing it at all these dances. He played three dances, and I mean, the song, we couldn't play it enough on the air, but my program director wouldn't let us play it. So I stood on his desk one time and screamed. I said, you know, I feel, you know, like I'm deserting every listener we have. So he finally let me add it, and it went to number one in one week. You know, the first people I'm talking to in Pittsburgh were Chuck Brinkman from KQV and Clark Race from KDKA and the local media. And, uh, you know, a week later I'm performing there, and, uh, uh, you know, two weeks later we're in New York uh, signing a record deal. Hey. 
Two years after recording Hanky Panky in Niles, Michigan, Tommy James quickly had to find a Shondells for work in Pittsburgh. While visiting the T-Bird Lounge in Greensburg, PA, Tommy found his group. In between the first and second week, I needed a band real quick, so I uh, went into a local club uh, near Greensburg, Pennsylvania, <laughs> a little town over there, and uh, walked in, and the first band I saw was a group called the Rack On Tours, and they were a local band playing, and they were real good, and I asked them if they wanted to be the Shondells, and that was it. The fella who really was bringing us into town, the promoter, was Bob Mack, who owned these clubs. And so he basically introduced me to all the local people and um, became, uh, in essence, my first manager and took me to New York and, and uh, thank God for him. 